Hello, welcome back to the workshop. This is the fuel tank from my 1953 NSU Max motorcycle. This one, I had to do a lot of welding on the left side. I can't weld fuel tight, so it's got some pinholes. So in today's video, I want to take some tank sealer and I want to seal this up. Specifically, I'm using Caswell's tank sealer. I bought this myself, it's not sponsored content. I went with this one because that's what most of the internet recommended. So, if that interests you, stay tuned. We'll get started. So I don't intend for this to be a how-to video. There's plenty of really good videos here on YouTube on how to use this stuff. Instead, I've never done this before. I've never used a tank sealer. So, I figure you all can go with me. If I have trouble or I learn anything along the way, we can talk about it at the end. My tank has already been prepped. I gave it a good bath. I soaked it in phosphoric acid to remove all of the rust. I then filled it up with ceramic medium for a vibratory tumbler. I attached a vibrating motor to it and I vibrated that around. And that did a great job of getting the rust and an old liner that were in here out. I then rinsed it with alcohol, rinsed it with acetone, and then re-rinsed it with alcohol. It is clean and it's ready to go. So looking at the instructions they provided, basically I mix these two together. I stir it for about two minutes and then I pour it into the tank, swirl it around for five minutes and then pour out the excess. It says to not use this stuff above 85 degrees or it cures too quickly. It's 78 degrees in my shop so I think we're all right. I'm going to mix this stuff in one of these one quart mixing tubs. I think that'll fit. Actually no, I might need a bigger one. I'm going to mix this stuff up in one of these two and a half quart mixing containers. I'm going to go into the kitchen and steal my wife's spatula. It'll give me a good reason to get her a new one anyway. The instructions tell me to use some glad wrap or some plastic cling wrap to seal the filler hole. So I'm going to use that and then I'm going to use an o-ring wrap that around to hold it in place. I don't want that tank sealer all over the neck so I put a little masking tape here. I don't know if that's really necessary but when this is on here and held in place I imagine that tank sealing is going to get around and at least onto the sides here. All right, so this one's clear. So this one must be the colored one. Oh yeah, that is a nice color. So I'm gonna put on my respirator. I won't be able to talk to you guys. And I'm gonna pour these two into this mixing cup. I'm going to mix it with my wife's spatula until it's thoroughly mixed. I'm going to watch my watch. I'm going to do that for two minutes. And then once that's done, I'm going to take what's in here. I'm going to pour it into the tank. Put the glad wrap on. Hold it in place with a clamp. And then I'm going to work it around. So, like I said, I won't be able to talk because I'll have the respirator on. But that's how it's going to go down. It occurs to me I ought to put a trash bag over this tank. That way if I spill it doesn't make a giant mess.
tunnel's not quite done. I swirled around for like 10 minutes, I think is what it was, including throwing everything on the ground. It's still quite a bit draining out. I want to just look and see how it looks. All right, I think that's good. I'm gonna flip it over now and just let the epoxy set on the bottom of the tank. I'm gonna leave it alone, just not bother with it for two days, probably through the weekend. After it's had a chance to cure, I'll show you guys how it turned out. All right, so it's been about 35 minutes since I mixed that up. And this stuff is now set to where it's kind of like silicone. So also, this container is getting crazy hot. So I'm gonna take this out, put it outside, that way if it catches fire, it's, it's outside, not in my shop. But when you're doing this, 35 minutes, it's like somebody flipped on a switch and this stuff set up. Here's kind of how that turned out. It's a little bit difficult to film. That surface dried and it's hard. It feels a lot like glass. It's really smooth and it's really hard. Let's see if this helps. You get a lot of reflections of the light, which makes it difficult to film. But that'll give you an idea kind of how that looks. Where it's thicker is where it's darker red. So like in the bottom there where it pooled. But this looks really good. It has dried now, it's only been overnight, but I'm happy with the results so far. We will see how it looks once it actually gets fuel in it. So I did learn some things on this one that I think will help you out. The first one, make sure that whatever you put in that fuel tap hole is in there securely. I used one of these rubber plugs. I got it at my local hardware store. I pushed it in, it felt really secure, but as I was rolling the tank around, you know, it was easy to bump it out and then once that happened, epoxy started to leak everywhere. So make sure that whatever is in that fuel tap hole, that it fits in there really well. The second one, make sure your work area is clear. I had the measuring cups and spatula and some of the other supplies that I was using on this project right next to where I was working. And you saw it, once the epoxy started leaking, I just, I was knocking things off the table and I was already irritated with the leaking epoxy and it just really didn't help. So make sure that work area stays clean. Just move all the stuff out of the way before you pour that epoxy in. The third one, I had a problem with air bubbles. So I have air bubbles in my liner. I don't know that they're gonna be a problem. It doesn't look like they go all the way through the liner, but 
I think what caused that is when I was mixing the epoxy, I mixed it pretty vigorously and I may have rolled air into it. And then once I poured that in here, the air bubbles just stayed in the epoxy. I don't know that that's what happened, but I think that's what happened. So to remedy that, I think if I had mixed it less vigorously, maybe tapped it on the table before I poured it in, and then once I poured it in, tapped the tank on the table when it was done, just try to dislodge those air bubbles, I think I would have gotten better results with that. Other than those three things, I was really happy with how this turned out. It wasn't hard to do. It turned out really nice. I like the, the hard, glossy finish that's in there. If it holds up well, it'll be a really good product. So, the internet, if you go searching for this tank liner, the guys on the internet forums will tell you that it'll fail in two weeks or a month, you know, or whatever. It's a ticking time bomb. But, none of those internet forums actually have photos of what a failed Caswell liner looks like. So, I'm going to take that with a grain of salt. I will report back after I put some fuel in this and I run it for a while and let you know how it worked out. I'll put sort of a summary in the description of how everything works. So, if you enjoyed this content, consider subscribing. With that, thanks for watching.